So as we get into this stand, uh, we've, we've got a lot of things going through our mind. It's the uh, first time ever in this stand. We, we got together with Andy over the summer when we got in this area, found this spot, hung the stand, and created two bedding areas adjacent to the stand, hoping to set up in the middle and catch bucks as they cruise back and forth between the bedding areas. It's just cracking daylight. Saturday, November 19th. Finally got some weather, had a weather front push through. We're in a new spot on this ridge, timber. Lots of sign in here. Hoping to catch them cruising through here. We're gonna kill one today, I can feel it. Shortly after daylight, I decide I'm gonna do some, some doe bleats and some immature buck grunts. I'm just gonna try to paint a picture, try to convince a buck that there's a doe that's in estrus, tail end of the season, post rut, and there's a young buck that's gonna try to breed her. You want to try to convey some emotion and kind of put yourself in that position. Really paint the picture with how you're inf putting inflection on the call and the emotion that you're using. If you just sit and uh, blow your call in one direction, you know, you're not going to be as successful as if you were to move around a little bit, use some directional calling, and also, like I said, convey that emotion and really try to really try to drive it home that this is actually happening. And what I like to do um, with the extinguisher is I'll, I'll really work on that tube, on the throat tube, and I'll aim at different directions, but if you use two hands, and you cup it, and you direct it, and you let that air out at different times, and uh, really put some back pressure on it, you can make it sound a lot more natural than just holding it in one direction just like this and you know obviously that sounds a lot better if you start putting some inflection on it you do the same thing with your buck grunts drop right down into an immature buck grunt really make it seem like that doe is running and that buck is falling right behind her just to make it all that much more real So I just finished up that calling sequence, kind of scanning out on the field edge and looking off towards the bedding areas, and I thought I heard something. And I knew I knew what direction it came from, so I was kind of staring holes in the timber over there trying to figure out what I heard and where it was coming from. And uh, Kyle tapped me on the shoulder and he said, right here, shooter buck coming. He's doing exactly what we wanted him to do. Post rut, he's coming in on the bottom side of the bedding cells and he's catching that last tail edge of the wind, scent checking the bedding cells, and he's trying to put those pieces of the puzzle together to figure out where that buck and doe is that he heard. In order to get on up the road to see that other bedding cell, he's gotta walk right by us. My adrenaline's through the roof, my heart's just pounding in my chest, and I'm just so excited that I'm finally gonna get a shot at a buck, and finally right here, right now, we've got a chance at one, and, and I'm pumped up. And instantly I knew that I held a little too high on him 
and uh, put another arrow in him and, and got him finished off as quick as I could. I just done a few doe bleeds and an immature buck grunt, little sequence, and it just stopped. And all of a sudden I hear something behind us. Look, here comes this buck. Do you hear them doe bleeds? He come right up this levee just like they're supposed to do. It's 7.15 in the morning. We've been, it's been daylight for half an hour. First half hour ever in this tree. That's right. Virgin set. Just incredible. Couldn't, can't believe how it worked out. Well, there's really three keys to this hunt. The first one being setting yourself up for success. By laying out these bedding areas and, and setting the stand where we did right in between them, you know, in our minds when we set that stand in July, we envision bucks cruising on this levee on the bottom side of this bed on these bedding areas um, on a northwest wind, which is exactly what we had here. The second key to this hunt was that it was the first time we'd ever sat in this stand. No one had been in this area since probably July when we set the stand. Um, a lot of times those first time sits can be deadly because there's been no pressure on there, there's no human scent, and they just flat out don't know you're there. The third key to the hunt is uh, directional calling and realistic calling. You know, having a good realistic call like the extinguisher um, and, and putting those emotions in there, like I mentioned before, being able to take that throat tube and, and aim at different directions and using a that in a combination with your hands and, and just really putting some inflection and emotion in the calls. That's what made that buck believe there was a party going on and he had to come in and see what it was. Want to experience the same results you just witnessed? Use what the Deer Society experts use. The Extinguisher Deer Call and Black Rack Rattling System are the highest rated deer communication systems of all time. And less than 1% of deer hunters will have the opportunity to buy one this season. Get yours today at thedeersociety.com. Order now.